In our discussion of electronic spectroscopy, we focused a lot on the process of going from the ground state to the excited state where we absorb a photon. Here we're going to look at the opposite process where we take a molecule in the excited state and look and see what happens when the molecule goes into the ground state. And if that process by going from the excited state to the ground state involves emission of a photon, then that process is called luminescence. So luminescence, systems decay from an excited state. There are two general processes by which they decay and emit photons. One is fluorescence and the other is phosphorescence. Let's take a closer look at that. Let's take, um, and we'll have to worry about selection rule. So we'll uh, start from a singlet ground state. Most molecules are in the singlet state. So a singlet ground state. And we'll draw this line to represent that energy level. And then we'll go to an excited state to obey the selection rules for electronic spectroscopy. This will also have to be a singlet. Recall that the spin multiplicity can change when you go to the excited state. And we'll draw this like this. All right, so we have an electron or a molecule, and we're going to absorb a photon. We're going to take an electron and put it into an excited state. And here's the excited state. Now we're going to ask the question, how does this molecule get from the excited state to the ground state? All right, well, we'll generally say there are two processes. One is it goes from the excited state to the ground state by not emitting a photon. So this we'll call a non-radiative decay. In other words, it does not emit a photon. We can also take the excited molecule and take it to the ground state by emitting a photon. And this we'll call a radiative decay. And if this happens, this is called fluorescence. So fluorescence is the emission of a photon. So out comes H nu by going from an excited state to the ground state. The molecule gets rid of its excess energy by emitting a photon. It can also get rid of its excess energy by not emitting a photon, for example, interacting with its environment, for instance, a collision with a solvent or something, and the energy then is dissipated to the solvent, and then the molecule just decays without emitting a photon. But wait, there's more. You can take this molecule, which is in the excited state, and go to a triplet state. All right, this triplet state, recall, they're the going from the singlet to the triplet in the excited state. That's not allowed because the uh, spin, the capital S spin quantum number changes by plus one in this case. So this is S, if it's a singlet, S equals zero, singlet, S equals zero. But a triplet, S is equal to one. So delta S for this process is not allowed, but it happens anyway. It's a for forbidden transition. Now we have the molecule in the triplet state. It'll stay up here. It can decay by a non-radiative uh, non process, or it can decay, just like fluorescence, it can decay by emitting a photon. So out comes here H nu, a photon. And this would be called the radiative decay. So this when you go from a triplet to a singlet, and note that this transition is also forbidden because delta S is not equal to zero. S is one here, S is zero here. That's a forbidden transition. That radiative K from typically a triplet to a singlet where you have delta S not equal to zero is called phosphorescence. And then together, fluorescence plus phosphorescence, together, those two are called luminescence. Uh, quantum yield is an important quantity in chemistry because quantum yield is affected by intra and intermolecular interactions. So as we'll see in just a minute, one can determine something about the motion of the molecule that's fluorescent or the particular environment the fluorescence finds itself. So that's a brief introduction to luminescence. We're now going to talk in more detail about fluorescence.